Hi, today I want to do a KiCat 5.0 video, just an overview, how to use it, some new features, and maybe if you're from the older 4.0, 4.0, whatever, then this is maybe some update. So let us start with the new project. I've already created a new project. I replace it. So this is what you expect if you get a fresh start. You have some buttons that you can use. You can everything use also from the menu. So here you can also create a new project or project from a template. This is maybe also interesting for you. Here are some template projects you can use. So maybe if you're interested in doing something with the Arduino or STM32 from ST Micro or with a BeagleBone or maybe this Launchpad XL or do a Eurocard or what have you. It's also whatever enclosure template that someone has also created for you already or something with a Raspberry Pi. So let us start just with a new project. And sure, you can also open a project, import a project from a maybe Eagle version. But I used so many years Eagle, so I never for some years I just using KiCat. So I have no project to import. And you can also archive your project and unarchive this. But this creates only a zip file and unzip the files. So, and you can also use the tools, but the tools are just the buttons that you see here. You can use some text editor or you can set your preferences like your paths. You can set a variable and set the path that you want to use. So maybe I also cre already created some environment variables for my own KiCat libraries and for my own 3D packages that I've imported from the Walta 3D package and so on. But this version has so many 3D packages that I never, I think I don't use this anymore. I just use the 5.0 3D packages. So that's the preferences. You can also see the hotkeys and edit some other hotkeys if you want. And you can see the help, the KiCat menu getting started and so on. And here you see the KiCat version. So I'm using 5.00 and the nightly built versions. So the tribute goes to all the hundreds of developers the doc writers, the artists, the translators, and so on. So let us start it with a new schematic. I think we just using this one by one, just one button after the other. So let us start with a new schematic. Here you can set the environment. You can set grid on off. If you work in inches or millimeter, you can set your cursor, can show or hide some pins and so on. And here on this side, you have all this thing you need. You can print, set the page settings, plot something, zoom on and off and so on. We can use this later in the process. And this is to work also with the PCB layouts. And this is for advanced stuff that we need later. So maybe if you want to create a new symbol or borrow some libraries, you can use the footprint editor for new symbols. So you no, not only sometimes use a new symbol, you also create the footprint. The footprint you need for the PCB and the symbol you need in the schematic. So next thing to annotate some all the symbols you placed on your schematic and do an electrical rule checking. We can use this later. Here you can assign not assigned symbols to a footprint later for the PCB and then put all the tracks and so on and wires and footprints to a net list. Here you, here you can manage all the symbols you created. We can see this later when we have insert some symbols in our schematic. Then you can generate the bill of material so you can use it maybe in an Excel sheet or what have you. And this is all your editing toolbox. So let us just start with some symbols. So we take this symbol and just place in symbol. So maybe we want to insert a resistor. We can do this here. 
then maybe we insert a capacitor and just use the R key to rotate it. Or we can also use the right mouse button. And as you see here, we can use the orientation. So I press the R key. And this is rotating clockwise. You can also rotate counterclockwise, mirroring or reset to the default position. So you can also use X or Y or just rotate it. So and C, we copy and rotate it and just insert a new symbol. Maybe we just insert a voltage regulator. And this is all our small PCB. So I press the M key to move this component, rotate it a little bit. And now we are done. So maybe a little bit this one. Then we can also insert this power port. We insert maybe in ground GND symbol here and then we place our wires. We can also place in bus but just start with wipe. So we connect this this one maybe and this goes to ground. We have here in junction automatically set and then go to this and maybe we this is our load resistor. So and as you see all the symbols have an C and then question mark U question mark C question mark R question mark so we can now use our rotation tool to annotate all our schematics so yes i want to do the entire schematic keep existing annotation no i just want to reset everything then we can sort the numbers by the x position or y positions i do what the default settings so annotate Yes, I want to clear. And now you see we have C1, U1, C2, and R1, and our ground sim. So maybe we also insert, maybe we use 5 volt power flex sim. So insert it here. Now we can maybe use electrical rule checking. So let's run it. There's no pin to drive it and here's also no pin to drive it. Then I do the following. I just insert a in power flag and we have maybe flag. There it is. So I said this is our power and also copy this pressing the C just rotating by R. So we have also a ground symbol here and a five. This is our positive power and our negative power. So let's do the rule checking again. And now we have no else. So now we can save our schematic and also generate our net list. So save it. Okay, our project just have the name new. So it's a little bit just for demo. So now an important pass is to create new symbol. You can use this button or you can go out of the schematic and use this button to create a new symbol. So the first thing I do, I just create every time a new, I create a new library. So we can, we have no interference with the KiCat project. So I use a global library or project dependent library. I just create a global library. So here's our new library. And now we can create a new symbol for our new library. So we have to select our library, new library, and then we can just create a new symbol. Maybe this is an, maybe this is an special IC. So I call this low dropout voltage regulator LDO. This is just an example. So yes, I want a reference designator to be in U. I've just one package. I don't want to use an alternate body style. No, I create also no power symbol and no units are interchangeable. And yes, I want to show the pin number text, the pin number name, and also name inside. So now we can use the M and create a little bit, create a little bit space between our component and just place the first pin. So pin name, we maybe name it in, and this is pin number one and goes to the right position. And this is an power input maybe. And we have used the graphical style. So next pin goes to the left and this name 
out and we can use pin number two also our output so we have done a mistake i just go to this position press escape and then the e command or we can use the edit e and we use a power input so next one call it g and d ground pin number three goes up and it's also in power input and maybe if you wonder yes it's visible and this is the text size we can use the length and also the position but we can change the position as you see so we have to position this field reference maybe on top then we can also create a new graphical lines like so and now our component is ready so it's just an example you can use whatever you want you can have one pin and what have you so then we save our symbol use it in our schematic so back to our schematic maybe we want to leave this now we can use the properties edit edit properties and just change our symbol so we want to change use our new created library new library and want to use the ldo symbol so here's our new symbol we just have to fit it here and now maybe we just want to to drag this wire so we can use the g command as you see i press also already the right mouse button and then use g or drag y so we can drag the wire what in whatever direction we want i want to connect this one and also here we want to drag the wire to this position and maybe drag also the junction to here and also the ground symbol to here and maybe also our power flag a little bit out of the way so drag power flag so and to make it a little bit look nicer we rotate the power flag and maybe also here it move so and now it's time to set also our footprints so we can use the assigned pcb footprints to the schematics or we just use the properties and then edit footprints or we just use the hotkey the f and now we select one of the very nice so we go to capacitor and choose if we want to use an smd or through hole capacitor and if we use an smd maybe we use this 0603 package and then just double click and we have insert this to our field then we can just use copy and edit this maybe to this component as you see to this component as you see and we can just insert the text and that's also set up our component or we use like already said this assignment to the footprints and here we see all our components and what component have missed something so maybe we now use the resistor and use also an smd resistor maybe 0805 and for our ldo we can use another package maybe this sot smd package and we use sot223 package for our ldo and now we are ready and can go and save our net list yes we save it and now we go yes we want also save and now we can go to the pcb layout editor and start with a new net list so i just read our net list read the current net list and then place our component somewhere in our worksheet and now we can see our footprints and connect them with wires like so so five volt goes to here but we see this is not optimal to place our component here so maybe we select our component and maybe press the r key to rotate and maybe like so we place the component in better position so but this depends what you want so maybe you have to rotate the component a little bit and see how to fit how it fits best to our board so maybe we use this ground and then the next component move and with the rat's nest we see where we can place our component best so maybe we do this like so just rotate it a little bit and then this component goes here and then just place the tracks and now a little bit more about pcb new and how to use it 
to our PCB new and we just use this for demonstration. So you can activate the design rule or disabling the design rule checking by routing or track editing. You can hide the grid. You can display the polar or rectangular coordinates like so. You can set the units to inches or millimeter. You can change the cursor shape, display the red nest as you see here. Or if we have some fill zone, maybe like so. We just insert some fill zone and we can display the fill zone even filled or just like an just like the shape or you can also show this in this outline form so let's switch it off and the same with the pads you see outlined pads if you wish or the weas also outlined with then you can show the tracks also in outline format or you can use the high contrast format like so and if you switch the layer to the backside layer then you see just the backside layer sometimes this is gives you more overview so you see the difference back hopper front hopper and this helps you to trace some tracks the same you can switch on on off the layer manager or here the microwave tools on and off so this is the normal view this is all the views and here are the tools for saving page settings footprint editor the viewer for the footprints printing zooming importing the netlist here we have find some components on your board the design rule checking and here you can switch the layers but you can also do this here and here you can set the layer pairs whatever the copper layers are so and here you have also some settings for the tracks maybe the weirs but this depends on your design rules where are the design rules and set up so we have only one design rule we can add maybe i maybe call it xl and we have a little bit more clearance use maybe double the track width and everything stays the same and maybe we also assign the five volt rail and the ground to the xl layer so it's now we can show anything and we see we have only one default and some other layers so and now we can see that our track width is a little bit bigger and follows our design rules and as you see the tracks is also switched between but it this depends where we start with our track so maybe here we see a small track and here we see automatically the design rules. same with the wheels now we can also use auto track with so it starts with the track use maybe if we change now our design rule on our ground layer back to the default now we can also start with a big or if we use auto track you see we start with a big track and here are some grid settings but you can also use the grid settings here but on my version i just use this menu to change the grid size because the other on the mouse menu not don't works now i show you oh we have an update on this okay now it's working and the same with zoom we can zoom other levels and here we have our tools to highlight the net maybe now the net is not highlighted but if we and this is the the toolbar for editing so we can switch back to the cursor highlighted the net display the local rats nest but mostly we use the other tools so add a new footprint if you need one mostly you use the, the routing tool to route the tracks like so maybe sure this is not a perfect example but it's just showing the function of the tools you can add we are at a fill zone already showed you can add an keep out zone maybe like so you don't want to include any tracks in this region and also no copper pours so now we see that this zone is not filled with our so this portion is not filled in our fill zone and we can also add graphical lines depends on what what layer we have used so i used the silk layer but you can also put other layers maybe the user layer and here we can use maybe the edge cut layer the same if you want to add a circle or an arc or a polygon whatever you like 
You can also add a text maybe on the sixth screen. So you can add revision 1.1. And now you have a six screen text for your. And if you want to change it, go to properties and maybe make it a little bit smaller and reduce the thickness. So next thing we can add also dimensions. I usually do this in the user layer so I can switch the dimensions on and off so we can measure our board dimensions. And if we don't want to display them, we just switch the layer on and off. So next thing we can also add an alignment target. So everything is aligned on this target point. Also, we can delete items place an origin for the drill files and also add an origin for our grid. This is sometimes useful if we switch between maybe millimeters and mils. And you can also use the measurement tool, but this is only just for a few seconds. And if you switch it off, then the measurement is goal. So we can just measure some distance. So that's all for this. But maybe some tricks if you, like me, sometimes wonder if your and your cursor is not glued to the footprint pads. You can also find this magnetic pads. You'd never reach the pad in a proper way. So even if you want to place some tracks, you don't find the magnetic tracks. So I think this is useful for the routing of the tracks. So same for the tracks. So now we can also see some menus. You can rescue your last backup. You can import some files. You can export some files. You can use the fabrication outputs. Maybe you want to output your boom file, your bill of material. Print the board to maybe PDF file or what I use. If you want to export your Gerber files, then use the plot command, use the Gerber file format. And also don't forget to generate the drill files. And I mostly use one single file for the plated through hole and plated throughs. So, and use the newest format if, you, if your board house is okay with this and switch on the layers that you need. Maybe you don't need the paste and the mask layer, but I just included this. Maybe if you want to fabricate and stencil, then just use the paste layer. So next important menu is maybe edit all tracks and wires. Here we can automatically change some tracks and footprints. If we like swap some layers and do some global deletions and clean tracks and wires maybe if we need it. So maybe we want to delete all tracks just in once and just keep the wheels. And yes, you have to confirm it. And now all our, our tracks are away. Reprint the fill zone, but it just makes only a little bit sense. Now we have also the view menu with zoom, zoom in, display the grid, grid settings, also an important feature. Here we can set also the user defined grid. Mostly I just define a big grid, 10 by 10 millimeter maybe. And also we can set the fast switching grid. So mostly I use 10 mils and also one millimeter just so here you can also switch the units, but I think this is the same as here. You see just switching between metrical and imperial units. And as already told, setup here, you can do the layer setup, the design rules, that's very important. And also very important, the pet to mask clearance. And I'm not sure what differential pairs are. So place is the same as we use here in the toolbar. Routing options, do some inspection, design rule checking. So we have many unconnected, we have many unconnected items like so. So we have to do a little bit. Let's draw some tracks. So that's not working. Let's move the wheel a little bit here. Drag, track. Now we can do the rest. So, and this is all already better if we switch off the fill zone. So now we can do the design checking. We have a little bit flaw here. So let us drag this a little bit, start the design rule again. And now we have no errors and no unconnected tracks. 
even if our old PCB makes no sense. So next thing we can use the tool menu, load the net list, update from the schematic. If we, and if we change some footprints, we can also update the footprints from the library and other things. And maybe you can pay attention to the preferences. So you can configure the paths, manage the footprint libraries, 3D shapes. But an imp important thing is the general settings, as already taught, magnetic pads, magnetic tracks, coordinates, units, auto saving and so on and also here you can switch between the tool sets now they are not views not the OpenGL or what have you view now it's called legacy and modern tool set and so on set the language edit the hotkeys save your project and so on and open the help and we can show also the 3d viewer with an little more advanced example and you started by view and then 3d viewer and then you can see all your boards and components drills and pads in the 3d view and the most important option is the, the display option where you can maybe activate the through hole models and now we can see here we have also a connector and a through hole model and you can also change the rendering engine but maybe we all first just switch off all components then we see our board and pads a little bit better and now we can also switch off the soda paste and soda mask layer and maybe also the adhesive layer and just show the silk screen so and now just also switch off the silk screen and we have the bare copper on our PCB board. And this is the back side. And it depends what you want to inspect with the three. So maybe we know not the silk screen. I want a soda mask. So now this is what our board looks like from the board house factory without any silk screen. Now we can maybe inspect our traces and so. And we can switch to the ray tracing rendering engine. And now it's a little bit slower as you see. But the result is a little bit fine so so it takes a while but then we can see our board and we can also set some rendering options but i switch back to the opengl rendering engine we can choose some colors maybe our board color six screen color solder mask color so maybe if we have maybe in red solder mask then we can also switch the solder mask color or maybe someone prefer some kind of violet you can also set this your 3d and this is for the back and front side and you can also switch on some grid maybe a small grid five millimeter grid and as you see we have some grid for measuring measurement maybe you can also export some images but that's all next thing is the footprint library editor we can set an active library i have my own library so i use my module library maybe I also configure the paths and now i can open some of my footprints maybe i use the esp32 footprint so maybe this room module in a short form i have also different kind of the rover module now we just can we can edit the pets if we need more pets or what i want to do is i want to set the clearance settings and i just want to maybe set this to solid and that's it. so we have an advantage that also the back side of our pads are filled with solid so let us start with the footprint editor we have here already the view options grid on and off polar coordinates or rectangular it's just the same as in the pcb new editor show the pads in outline mode text outline same with a sketch and also enable high contrast mode here we have just the saving and editing options just the saving and library options select and select a library save the footprint create a new library open footprint delete parts new footprint footprint wizard load and footprint from a library import export set the footprint properties so maybe if you want to change a name then you can set the value of this and sure this sets also the text so if you edit this you can just 
edit this. And now, as you see, this is the same as if we edit this. And, and you can print the footprint, redraw or view, zoom in, zoom out, and also zoom to everything and just zoom to a selection. And on the right side, we have also our editing and inserting options. Set the cursor to the select mode or insert just in pet. And for the pet, we have also set everything. So we can set the through hole pet, SMD, in connector pet, or just mechanical non plated through. So we have no coppers, everything. We can change the size, oval, rectangular, what have rounded, rectangular. Set everything, the position, the size, the orientation. So like so, you can also edit, set this something in weird direction if you want. And also set the technical layers if you want. Also have pa paste at the or just one copper layer, only the back layer. And you, now you see also that we have an that we can set the hole size. And if we want to use an oval hole, we also can set maybe one milliliter, 1.4, or maybe this is also what we want sometimes. And this is also important if we want a special clearance settings or how we behave with the copper zone filling. And we can and also use this from a parent footprint or set this to solid or thermal leaf or no fill zone if we want to not fill some pads. Sometimes it's convenient to set this to solid or just leave this from fair and also set some maybe some gaps. And also if we want to use a custom shape, then we have to set this and add new primitives here. But I not use this, so I don't know how. So now we can also add some graphical lines like so and can tell if this on a silk screen layer, it's on the front or on the back side and so on. The same with a circle or just a polygon. You can also insert text. Set an anchor point for the footprint or the origin point for the grid. That's important if you switch between millimeters and mils. And also we have a measurement too. So maybe I want to set the grid origin to this point. And now we can use the measurement tool and measure the distance. So to delete this, now we can save this. Yes. Now also an example for the Gerber viewer. I've prepared my own example. Like you see, this is the board I designed and now we can open the Gerber for this. So just I hide all the back side. Now we can just see the front side of our board. This is the copper layer, as you see, the silk screen paste layer and also the sole mask. And in the Gerber viewer, we just have viewing options. As you see, we can display the outline, normal high contrast mode, switch the layer and off and so on. And just this is more or less in viewing tool. Next, we have also the importing tool for bitmaps. That's sometimes useful if we want to include an maybe logo for some manufacturer on your layouts or chips. Then you can import a bitmap and export this to the Ishima library files or to the PCB new files or what have you, postscript. But I don't use this and logo for title blocks. I don't know, I'm just using these two, two options. And you can do this in color, use also negative export, or you can also do this in black and white and set also maybe some layer information. Next, we have the calculator tool to calculate the voltage divider for a voltage regulator. Maybe you can calculate a track with, if you need some power lines, maybe a little bit more amps sometimes or here the electrical spacing but sorry i don't use this today so i have no clue and i'm not a high frequency specialist so i don't know. i have no clue what this what you can do with this calculator here we have uh, the color codes for resistors or sometimes board classes whatever you have micrometers centimeters mils inches whatever i don't never use this 
And last but not least, we have also the worksheet editor. So, but today I've never needed this, so I cannot tell anything about this worksheet editor. Maybe you can edit some, some items, but I have no clue. Thanks for watching today and I hope you find this useful. See you next time and bye bye.